Latest on the Sixers, Tom Moore, Calkins Media, joins us as the Sixers. Uh, they've won 6-7 to seven at home, uh, two in a row without Embiid, but a uh, tough challenge tonight against the Spurs. Tom, welcome back. How are you? Oh, there we go. There's Tom. Sorry about that, pal. Uh, all right, so uh, no Embiid again. Any surprise here? Uh, you know, you see him at practice. He seems like he's uh, doing stuff and kind of working out, but uh, are you surprised that he's not quite ready, or does this seem like, uh, you know, something you were anticipating? We really don't know, cause it, Mike, because it's been like uh, it's been a game here or two games there. It's been, you know, drips and drabs, and it, tonight's game seven. And tomorrow night's game eight in a row that he's missed, which is a lot of time for a uh, left knee contusion. Usually injuries like that are, you know, day-to-day, game-to-game. So you're talking two weeks out. And before that, if you remember, he played against Houston, then he missed uh, two or three games before that with the same injury. So you're talking about a significant, you know, fairly significant amount of time. Now, I don't know if they've always been really cautious. Are they being overly cautious? <clears throat> Excuse me, or is there something you know more here? Is it is it a bone bruise or is it something else? I, I don't really know, but it does you know it is sort of raising some eyebrows and understandably so. The fans want to know what's going on, and so do we. Yeah, I mean he's been working out, right? Does he show any ill effects? I mean, does he seem like he wants to play, and they're holding him back, or does he seem like he's on board? Well, we've seen him shoot around. We really haven't seen him scrimmage or anything like that. I mean, he looks fine shooting around. But that's not the same as scrimmaging five on five, et cetera. So we really don't know. We don't get to see. We only get to see the tail end of, you know, practices and, and things like that. So uh, do not know. But he had, he was shooting like right after he had suffered the injury at practice after practice when he was out. They announced he was going to miss two games, and he was shooting around and kind of looked like himself. But again, that's just you know standing there shooting, move around a little bit. That's not full speed contact up and down the court type of thing. Tom Moore's with us. Uh, no MB tonight or tomorrow. Uh, do you anticipate that he'll play uh, in, in the Rising Stars game and, and in the skills competition? That's a question for Brett Brown pregame tonight at 515-520 because, you know, Brett said a couple weeks ago when he was out, uh, when he, you know, had, I guess they announced he was going to miss two games with his injury, and he said he still thought or hoped that he would play in the game, but now we're getting, you know, uh, a little over a week away, and he will have missed at least eight games. We don't know about, you know, Saturday with Miami or then they play uh, away Monday and Wednesday uh, and then the All-Star break. So I do not know. I mean, they're so cautious here. You would wonder um, if, you know, if they'd let him play just, just on the off chance something would happen. That You know, after all this time and all this work and all this uh, cautiousness that perhaps uh, – Asking him not to go but not play might be the better course of action. Just, um, you know, the fan base has gone through a lot, and they are excited about what's happening. In the month of January, got people really excited, and now it seems to have hit the skids. Does any of this have smell fishy at all? Like, do you look at this situation and say something's just not adding up here, or is this just a case of them being overly, overly cautious? Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're trying to overtly lose game like a games like a tank four, like people are saying. I really don't think that that's the case. Brian Colangelo says he wants to win. He's not, you know, interested in, uh, you know, high lottery picks per se. He wants to develop something and get the players used to experiencing some success. You know, they went 10-5 and, five and, you know, in January, matched the whole win total for all of last season. And now, you know, they're 0-4 so far with a four-game road trip losing all four and every game by at least 16 and an average of 18.5, those games kind of felt like the previous three seasons. They had that feel where the Sixers were just overmatched and really not rarely in the games. And that's what a lot of the last three seasons were about. So, um, you know, Covington was out for three games too. That certainly didn't help. They, the Sixers have such a small margin for error and they just can't replicate what Embiid does um, at either end of the court, really. The defensive numbers are way – you know they're 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 way down in terms of uh, the the Sixers are allowing so many more points and higher percentage and so on and that is a direct uh, direct reason is no Embiid. Uh, Tom Moore's with us. Uh, all right, what's your take on Okafor? There's a lot coming out about him this week. It's kind of cooled off a little bit. Do you feel something's imminent, or do you think that just what we hear this time of the year? 
I think, Mike, what that did is the, you know, a Jinka and a 2018 protected first round pick kind of sets the bar around the league for what the price is or the going price is for Okafor right now. So Brian Colangelo can sit back and wait. The, the trade deadline is two weeks from tomorrow, the 23rd. So, you know, he can see hopefully somebody comes up with a better offer if somebody decides they want Okafor or thinks he's worth more than that or there's an injury or whatever. And then he can decide if, if nobody does better than that and the Pelicans deal is still on the table, do you pull a trigger on that or do you wait until the draft and see if you can get more if you package a pick or, you know, other things happen or free agency, things like impending free agency that, you know, maybe his value would go up. I don't think he has to make a deal, but I think it would be the best thing for the team, for Brett Brown and for the players, just to get some clarity here and kind of move on the last uh, – seven weeks of the season, having a better idea of what's going on. Do you like that deal? I mean, did you like the framework of getting a pick, a first-round pick, regardless of whether it's protected or what year it is? I mean, is that a win? Well, ideally it would be this year because this year's draft is so good. And right now I believe the Pelicans have a sixth-worst record in the league. But they don't want to do that, and I don't blame them. Next year's draft isn't perceived to be as deep in terms of point guard and just in general. Uh so I would understand that, whether it's top 10 protected uh, to lottery, which is top 14 protected or whatever. But I think under the circumstances, given what we've seen, I think that's a reasonable deal. I mean, you would think a number three pick in 2015 would be worth more, but with the market and, and with the, the warts that you know everybody around the league has seen at, with him at the defensive end, um, you're going to need the right player next to him. And Anthony Davis does do a lot of those things. And, you know, he's a good rebounder and shot blocker. So that is somebody who could compliment him very well, or he would compliment very well, depending how you look at it. And, you know, jenka has got three years left at about $5 million a year. So you're, you're absorbing some money, not big money, uh, but, you know, that would be the price you have to pay, uh, at least right now, to get a protected first-round pick. Tom, after watching Okafor last year, are you surprised that it's come to this? Well, offensively last year, you know, he, he averaged 17 and a half points, uh, shot over 50%, you know, uh, played the 53 minutes before he had the knee injury uh, and then the surgery that ended his season. Uh, but defensively, you know, it, it did not work real well. But I think this year when he came back supposedly in really good shape and had you know, reduced body fat and dropped, dropped some pounds and so on, you know, I think fans and everybody, uh, the Sixers, were hopeful that he would be more active uh, and more involved and more of a factor at the defensive end, but it just hasn't happened. Um, and I think everybody knows that around the league. So, you know, I I don't – I mean, I didn't expect a big uptick, but I thought maybe might be a little better at that end, but it, it just has not happened. All right, Tom Moore, Calkins Media, Sixers uh, tonight against the Spurs. No Embiid for the next two. Thanks, Tom. We appreciate it as always. Anytime, Mike. Thank you.